Hi everybody and welcome to another comparison video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today it's acoustics. On my left, your right, we're talking about the Essex 123. And on my right, your left, we've got the Kawai ND21. It's a 49 inch and a 48 inch upright. Both of these instruments are identical in age. They are both precisely three and a half years old. Uh, and we are going to compare their tone, we're going to compare their action. We have just had them both regulated and voiced and tuned, and they're both in phenomenal condition. We've also got them mic'd up exactly the same as we'll talk about in a little more detail once we get into the video. If it is the first time that you're joining us here, we would really appreciate either now or at any point in the video if you hit that subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know every time we come out with a new video. We're gonna be doing tons of playing and really get into the guts of these two instruments. So without further ado, let's get on with our comparison of the SX-123 and Kawai's ND21 right away. So as we do every week, we had a quick meeting to decide what might be some interesting videos that we could film. Uh, and it was brought to our attention that we had two pianos that normally don't get compared, but were as close to an apples to apples objective fair, right down the middle comparison as we could possibly have hoped for. We had a 2017 Kawai ND21, and we had a 2017 Steinway branded Essex. UP123, both in phenomenal condition, both in perfect tune, both had just been regulated and voiced. We thought, well, why not? Particularly because of all of the things <coughs> that these pianos uh, don't have in common, the one thing that they do when we're talking about new is price. These two instruments are virtually priced the same within the market. Now, the ND21 is not available in every single market around the world. Uh, Kawai uh, releases this, I believe, in Australia, Europe, Canada. It doesn't uh, release in the United States. So for people who are wondering what the heck an ND21 is, this is basically a reissue of the K25 or K3 era 48-inch uh, upright. It is not made in Japan. This is made in Indonesia um, by Kawai. Uh, the uh, UP123 uh, made by Pearl River in China for Steinway. So not the same country of origin, but approximately the same height, exactly the same age, uh, and most importantly and most relevantly, um, same price. So we thought, why not put them back to back and see how these two pianos compare. The heritages are very different. Uh, the sound is very different. Uh, and so I was totally into uh, you know, sharing our experience of these two instruments with you. Um, as always, we're going to talk about the sound and we'll talk about the action and some of the other observations that we have. Uh, and we're going to get started by doing some playing. Uh, so I'm going to start on the Essex and then I'm going to play the Kawai. We are recording these two instruments in exactly the same way, uh, with exactly the same microphones, um, positioned exactly the same uh, in terms of distance, 
uh, and in terms of placement uh, behind the instrument. Uh, and then we have uh, done absolutely no affecting or EQing. The only thing that we've done post uh, here uh, is just to make sure uh, that the uh, left and right microphones uh, are balanced so that you're getting a nice uh, stereo field. Other than that, you're hearing as close to what we're hearing right here at home as we could possibly present. Let's start with the Essex. just feeling like a lovely day today. Same thing over here. back over here and just play something a lot more open, a lot more sustaining so you get a sense of the piano with that type of a song.
Same thing on the Kawhi. Two very different playing experiences. Let's first talk about the tone. Uh, characteristically, the Kawhi has got a pretty round tone, which is something that a lot of Kawhis, I think, have the reputation. Normally, the comparison is Yamaha and Kawhi, and of course, the you know the old adage is that uh, Yamaha is the bright one and Kawhi is the darker one. I I'm not sure that you can count on that quite as a rule. You know, in today's market, uh, Yamaha voicing. Uh, has tended towards the rounder uh, out of the factory, certainly stuff bound for North America. Uh, and of course, if you bang on any piano for 20 years, it's going to get bright. doesn't matter how it starts. So, you know, a grain of salt. But there is, you know, there are design decisions that have been made by both companies that do actually contribute to a slightly treble biased or slightly uh, dark biased tone. And true to form, this Kawhi uh, certainly plays a little bit darker, has a, a, a nice round attack. There isn't really any strident uh, tone to the instrument in any of the range. Um, but it's still got a nice uh, singing tone, especially up here. Essex Funny, the difference between this Essex and the Kawhi isn't like completely dissimilar to another comparison we recently did where we were playing a Boston 178 against a GX2. There were similar types of comparisons, which makes me think that the hammers that they're throwing on the Essex and the hammers they're throwing on the Boston um, may be of the same cut. It's definitely a nice, uh, loud, open tone. Lots of resonance, especially in the mid-range here.
So one thing that I'm not getting as much on the Essex is a variety of tones. So I can get it down, obviously. Kind of keeps that same punch to it, no matter whether I'm playing quietly or trying to play quietly or, or loudly. Whereas I do feel like I can achieve a more intimate sound over here when I want to. But when I start to push it, I can still draw the same kind of brightness out of it as I get out of the Essex. So normally when you have those kinds of differences, most of what makes that that uh, is hammers and the action, you know, the, how it's regulated, but mostly also the geometry, you know, the speed that the hammer is slamming into the string and the blow distance, all of those things really affect how uh, strident or how um, sharp an attack of a note might be, uh, you know, in combination with the type of hammer, the hardness in the hammer, the weight of the hammer. So, you know, this is an art. You know, every company makes these kinds of decisions differently. That's the first difference I really notice is that that uh, dynamic difference in tone where I've got I feel like just a wider palette that I'm dealing with on the quad than on the Essex but on the Essex no matter what I do I'm still getting a really beautifully open um, and uh, you know just a full spectrum tone no matter what so there's gonna be some styles of music where that might actually be preferred especially for players um, that don't have, a, you know, like a really advanced classical technique. They don't want to have to like super work hard to get a nice clear treble tone. I could see that definitely being an advantage. Like even just myself sitting here playing kind of a jazz poppy thing, uh, the Essex is just uh, easier to be on because I don't really have to think about how I'm voicing the chord or look for some of that nuance. The minute I'm on the kawaii, my ear hears that that's there. I start searching for it and it completely changes how I play that, all of a sudden I'm, I'm uh, looking for softer, subtler ways to communicate a harmonic idea or something like that. So, you know, pianos change how we play, uh, obviously, and that's, that's one of the things I'm getting uh, out of the Essex and out of the Kawaii. The bass tone on these two instruments is also quite different. So, the Essex is designed to have a more reverberant cabinet than the Kawhi. They've got these huge big back posts. They look like fence posts on the back of this Essex. Um, and I believe they're spruce back posts. Um, you know, a lot of companies use spruce because it's, uh, it's lightweight, but it's pretty stiff and it does a great job of sort of transferring vibration through. So you sort of get the cabinet energized, but it's a fairly short bass string. So it's a shorter, you know, tubbier bass string on the Essex than on the Kawhi by almost two and a half inches between the, the um, uh, primary speaking length on the number one string here, which is I think around 44 and a half, and it's just shy of 47 um, on the ND21. So a thinner, longer string on here, so there's a, it's not quite as uh, woofy, but there is a bit more clarity. So again, this is a preference 
between what you like out of your upright piano. So. And then over here on the Kauai. That's a really clean, solid, clear bass tone down there. So the Essex has a more colorful bass but there's less of the fundamental. It's, 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 there is no right or wrong here. There's just a preference between the type of um, sound you want out of the bass on an instrument. And then as we move up, Quite generally does a pretty good job of the transition or the break. Let's hear how we have on the Essex. So just like on the Boston we were reviewing, the, the transition between um, the steel strings down in the bass is, is a little more dramatic. basically indetectable. We've already talked about the midsection, the Essex, uh, very reverberant. Almost choral through that middle section, I really enjoy that. I don't know if this is going to make any sense, but this feels more orchestral where that feels more choral. Anybody who plays brass or has sung in a choir knows like when you get locked in to a harmony and you get this resonance, I think it's the cabinet resonance that's producing that effect. Whereas over here, there's just a greater variety of tones that are kind of combining to, yeah, it just feels a little more orchestral over here. petting up. More cabinet resonance here as well. There's more of an anharmonicity. Slightly more closed treble on the Kauai up here. That's something that Kauai has really changed quite a bit on the more recent K series. So if we were comparing a K300 to the UP123, which I did not feel would be a fair comparison at all. It's more expensive. Generally, it's considered a more advanced scale design. We've got great, anyway, wasn't gonna work. Uh, the, the ND21 
has an older heritage. This is not a brand new scale design from Kauai. Nor are the hammers the same quality as what you get on the K-series. So both of those things contributing to a slightly more closed treble up here. Not unpleasant, just not quite as open. Now both of these instruments have solid spruce soundboard, neither one use laminated. They both have back posts, but as I said, the focus on the Kawai really was just um, almost entirely structural. There's really no tonal consideration for the back posts in here. Keeps the cost down much smaller and fewer back posts than what you get on like the K300. So this is really just for tuning stability um, and, and structure. Uh, whereas over here with those giant thick back posts, that's one of the things contributing to a more resonant cabinet, if that's a sound that you like. I mean, certainly on grand pianos, I always harp about resonant cabinets being a positive thing. Before we move on to action, I also just want to cover uh, some questions that people may have if they're watching this review of the Essex. Uh, so this is my understanding of what the Essex receives from Steinway, because this is a Steinway brand. It's not manufactured by Steinway. This is uh, done by Pearl River. So unlike the Boston line, where the Bostons are getting the hexagrip uh, tuning block, they're getting uh, some action components, and they're getting MAPES bass strings. Uh, from Steinway or you know Steinway's affiliated suppliers uh, for the Bostons. Um, essentially, uh, what Steinway has contributed here is design. So there really are no Steinway parts uh, that are going into this instrument. It's a Pearl River product, but it's probably one of uh, Pearl River's better products. Another video that I would really love to do uh, is to put this up against their very best Ritmuller product because they, uh, under their own name, uh, put some phenomenal Rip Mueller stuff out there. The other one that I had some interest to do uh, some comparisons with would be the Friedland F121. Friedland is a Schimmel brand uh, that Pearl River builds with Schimmel, and it's kind of the same arrangement that Steinway has with them. So Schimmel's contributed design, uh, Schimmel's contributed, in that case, I actually think some componentry as well as design. Um, so that would be an interesting uh, matchup um, to do down the road. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're actually going to talk about uh, the action response on these two because that's just as different as the tone. So thank you so much for being with us. Hope you're enjoying this comparison and we'll see you in just a minute. So the first thing that this Essex piano reminds me of, and some of you who have been around pianos for a while would know exactly what I'm talking about, others might not, but um, if you recall the Baldwin pianos, 80s and 90s, and you're thinking about either the 247 or the 2096, the Acrosonics. Um, these were instruments that had somewhat short actions, but their blow distance was larger, and so the strike speed was higher, and you wind up with a very specific sense of motion on the key, as well as a hardened uh, attack on the, on the note. And this piano reminds me so much of playing that action on a Baldwin uh, 247. In fact, even a little shorter Baldwin, like the 2096. So it's phenomenal for playing in the mid to upper ranges of your, your volume, your dynamic range. that type of an action design tends to uh, get more challenging is anytime you're trying to play softly or uh, you know voice chords or um, it's not necessarily a speed thing but it is a dynamic control issue with that action.
get a pianissimo, you almost basically just have to like feather touch that key, which makes it more difficult to control in that range. The kawaii action, I mean, this is in a lot of literature that they talk about. And in my opinion, sometimes it's been to the instrument's detriment in some of the earlier iterations of this. But right back to ABS and then the Millennium and then the newest generations of the Millennium, they've always talked about control in the lower dynamic range as being a major priority for them and something that differentiates the kawaii actions. Uh, on some of their earlier models, and I'm thinking of uh, some certain RX pianos that I played. Uh, I can also think of some uh, earlier K series that I've played. Uh, that came at the expense of some power. So if you were always somebody who loved playing in the shadows, musically shadows, not yourself. Um, that was fine, but if you needed an instrument that could produce truly a full range, that could be as loud as a Yamaha when you wanted it to be, but then uh, as quiet uh, as a mouse at other times, sometimes it was just too biased towards the soft and controlled. Um, their latest, uh, you know, the latest releases of their GX that I've been playing, late 2020, early 2021, uh, the way that they're regulating and voicing those now, as well as how they've done the duplex in the top, like there's just no compromise in terms of the power of the instruments. One of the most gutsiest instruments that I sit behind in that price range now. And I hear the same thing when I get behind a more recent K300 or K500, just super gutsy, but hasn't lost that control in the lower end. This feels like it's probably, I don't know, somewhere in like 5% softer out of the Essex versus what I could get out of the, the uh, Kawhi. So for my style of playing, that's just fine because I just love finding all of this interesting kind of chocolatey smooth. textures in between. But that's going to depend on your style of playing and what you like to get out of an upright because we aren't in a $20,000 or $30,000 range here so you can't get everything you want. There's always going to be a few compromises and it's up to you as a buyer or a player to decide what compromises you want. So for here, it's a very deliberate choice between 90 or 95 percent of the top volume in exchange for a lot more control down in your lower ranges and a really gorgeous orchestral sense of the tone over here. 
Uh, over here, a little bit more upper potential in terms of the volume. But a lot more difficult, in, in my opinion, based on this comparison right here, to control in the lower range. I could see some younger students really having trouble preparing for any kind of a recital if it was going to be on a grand or an upright where the action was a little bit heavier because you wind up having to play so lightly to get down in the proper range here that it's going to be pretty disorienting to get onto an instrument where uh, you still need a little bit of weight to, to uh, control and draw out pianissimos. Yeah, so this is Steinway designed action. Always difficult to know whether that's like 100% Steinway or it's 2% Steinway, what the blend is between Pearl River input uh, based on an action that already existed and Steinway coming in making a, a few modifications. Um, but it is a all wood action, which they will, of, of course, uh, you know, like to, well, Steinway knows that one of their main competitors here is Kawhi and Kawhi uh, rather famously uses a lot of composites in their action. So anytime you see people harping about wood, it's almost a bit of a dog whistle, like, hey, we're not a kawaii. Um, for people who know and like kawaii, then you're like, yeah, whatever. Um, but it's the all wood action. Over here on the kawaii, we've got a composite action. It's not the full Millennium 3. It would be the version that just uh, predates the Millennium 3 that's in here. Same action that goes into a K15 for uh, American audience members, you will know that piano and know what action is in there. Geometry is different. We've got longer shanks, uh, obviously, but um, components uh, and the structural pieces are the same uh, between these two. So here's some final thoughts on these two instruments. If you have them in your market, uh, I would definitely suggest checking the ND21 if you're taking a look at the Essex and probably vice versa. Uh, an interesting comparison to make for sure. Uh, We've got an instrument that is really capable of a tremendous amount of control and finesse for its price. And I, you know that's really kind of been one of Kawhi's things, if you want to call it that, for a long, long time. Uh, maximum control uh, and a lot of, of rich, darker tonal colors um, out of instruments that, for their price range, really don't have any right uh, being either one of those things. And the ND21 embodies that pretty well. Uh, it's slightly quieter instrument from the Essex, so I guess for some people that might be a very positive thing. And I would think for students, the extra control in the action and probably the fact that you uh, will have to work a little bit to get that maximum volume may wind up being a positive. You can talk to your teacher about that, of course. They may have some thoughts and opinions on it. Uh, over on the Essex, we've got an instrument with a really nice resonant cabinet. We've got those big back posts on the back contributing to a, a really a, an open, truly open big sound for a piano of its size. Um, an action that to me reminds me sort of of an 80s, 90s American style action. Feels like it's a faster, possibly a larger blow distance in there. So you're really getting a big strong attack, a little more difficult to control in the bottom half of your dynamic range. Also, a pretty meaningful difference between uh, the bass strings. We've got a much longer, well, two and a half inches longer bass string. Let's not uh, qualify it. Two and a half inches longer bass string in the Kwai versus the Essex. So you're getting a slightly more colorful but maybe less clear bass in the Essex versus the Kwai. Uh, and then gen generally, uh, something that feels a little more textured and orchestral through the whole range versus here, which is really uh, fairly bright and clear. Thank you so much for checking out another comparison video here on Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison, and if this is the first time that you have joined us here on the channel, we would really, really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, we are constantly getting new members all around the world joining our community, commenting, and so of course we'd love to hear what you thought about this video as well. So we will see you back soon for more videos and you have yourself a great day.